Now that we have inspected the correlations between the various variables, we'll move on to predicting the future margin with help of the margin in year one. We chose the margin in year one since the correlation between the two variables is the highest. When I only use one independent variable for the prediction, we call the model a simple linear regression. In reality, the ideal case of a perfect linear correlation where you can exactly predict y with a given value of x is very unlikely. Most of the time, the data points are scattered around in the form of a cloud. For this, we determine the direction of the relationship between x and y by fitting a straight line through the cloud. This is what we use the least squares estimation procedure for. This method helps us find the regression line and returns its coefficients. The difference between our prediction, a point on the line, and the actual value, a data point, is called the prediction error or residual value. That's enough theory. Let's move on to some code. We can specify the linear regression model using a formula object in the LM function from the stats package. Looking at the arguments, notice that we are looking to predict future margin as a function of margin using CLV data 1. We store the model as simple LM. Then we can use the summary function with simple LM as an argument to get an overview of the results. Take a look at the coefficient estimate for margin. With a value of roughly 0.65, it is greater than zero, which means that the higher the margin in year one, the higher we expect the future margin to be. Also, take a look at the multiple R squared at the bottom of the output. A value of roughly 0.32 means that about 30% of the variation in the future margin can be explained by the margin in year one. But more on that later. The ggplot function from the ggplot2 package gives us a nice visualization of the relationship. Here, we produce a simple scatter plot of the observations using our CLV data1 dataset. The data is the first argument. And we specify margin as the x-axis and future margin as the y-axis in the AES call. This is the second argument to ggplot. We also use geomsmooth with method equals lm to fit a linear regression line through the data cloud. Before moving on to multiple linear regression, let's take a look at the conditions that the data must satisfy for linear regression to be the best method. The relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable should be linear. The independent variable should not contain any measurement errors. The residuals should be uncorrelated. One cause of correlation among the errors is violation of the linearity assumption. The residuals should randomly vary around zero and their expectation should be equal to zero. Usually, this assumption is not problematic as long as a constant is included in the model. The variance of the prediction error has to be constant. If not, inferences made from the model can be misleading. When doing statistical significance testing, we also have to assume that the errors are normally distributed. A well-established method to check the violation of these assumptions is a plot of the predicted values against the estimated residuals. This is called a residual plot. Now, let's try some examples. 